was the most dangerous and scariest thing I've probably ever done. Columbia hired two people to test gear in the most extreme conditions on Earth. These are those people. The Directors of Toughness. Today is day one of Mount Shasta. We're driving up to meet our guides. I'm really excited to get on to round two of this road trip. I loved kayaking. I loved being out in this part of the country. I'm very excited about climbing and I can't wait to get started. We've had our first view of Shasta this morning and it's big. It's a huge drive. There's going to be a rough few days coming up. I am excited but I'm pretty, I'm pretty nervous I think. I've never really done this kind of climb and definitely aware that I'm going to have to be, you know, really careful going up. Ready? Yeah, let's do it. Hey, Mark. Hey, I'm Jenna. Hi, nice how are to you? Meet you. I'm Jenna Kane and I am a guide with Shasta Mountain Guides. I grew up in this area and have spent most of my life exploring this mountain. My name is Eric Layden. I work in all disciplines of mountain guiding as well as alpine guiding here in the Sierra to my beloved uh, Mount Shasta. I've been mountaineer guiding here going on my 11th season right now. We have uh, Mark and Faith on board for a three-day summit climb uh, via the West Face route. Me and the guys, I, I was excited. They just seemed awesome and I immediately felt a little bit better knowing that someone that had so much experience was going to be coming with us. Okay, so here at our gear check, guys, we have some really crucial items that are really important to climb the mountain. Yeah, they did a gear check with us. It's a really good process to go through and make sure that you haven't forgotten something. Eyewear, headwear, sunscreen, and everything like that is just so, so important for summiting a mountain like this. So we uh, just left the car park, heading up Mount Shasta. This afternoon, we are going to be making our way to Hidden Valley, which is going to be our camp for the night at about 9,200 feet. From there, we're going to be setting up our tents, going through a snow school with the mountain guide so that we're all ready, and uh, heading up to the summit at 2 a.m. Getting the summit is definitely not guaranteed, as it really never is in any mountain pursuit. Um, coming from sea level, not being acclimated right, I think that's going to be really a tough thing for them. It's going to be something that you haven't trained for, you're not used to, and uh, you're going to be thrown into the elements right away. We're up above the tree line and it's definitely windy, so we're going to layer up. It's beautiful out here. There's so much about this mountain that can't really be summed up in words. Yeah, Mount Shasta definitely is a special place. That, uh, it's held deeply in my heart. I've been climbing it now for 20 years. To me, it's a place you can get away from society. It's a place that exists freely on its own. We are going to be in the wilderness designated area the entire time. There will be no buildings or cell towers or anything constructed by humans, and there will be no motorized access. We definitely use a pack out system. We're always looking to camp in a designated camping area, looking just to mitigate the impact on it. It's such a pristine, pure place, and we want to protect it. Yeah, Mark. Nice. <laughs> Welcome to Hidden Valley. Thank you. <laughs> Once we arrive at our base camp there in Hidden Valley, we'll be setting up our camps, and then we'll shortly get into a snow school. Snow school is really important to learn the safety techniques to climb the mountain. We'll be working with our axes, we're working with our crampons. We're also incorporating the rope, because we'll be doing some short roping. Being able to competently self-arrest or get yourself out of trouble was really important. It could save your life. Yeah! Nice! It is dinner time at base camp, Hidden Valley. Mm. Pretty awesome place to eat dinner. Yeah, not bad. Though. Tomorrow we are up there. Well, good morning. It is currently 3.17 and it's summit day. We will be packing up and making our push for the summit of Mount Shasta. I'm really excited, yeah, it should be fun. Feeling pretty good. Um, I know it's just gonna get harder as we keep going, but the sun's starting to come out. Everything's just getting a pink glow. Super beautiful. Let's have a little break here. A little uh, 10 minute maintenance break. The uh, guys just told us to put our harnesses on, so uh, I assume we're getting roped in now. As we climb up at about another 1,000 feet higher, you guys, you can see in the middle of the west face, it's uh, right around 45 degrees and it tends to be quite icy, so uh, 
We're gonna do a system or a technique we call short roping, so that if you were to slip, I can catch it before that slip becomes a fall. Definitely very daunting putting crampons on for the first time and being told, you know, that people have fallen here and how you can fall here. There were so many things to think about and every single thing was essential. Like in mountaineering, what I've learned is you really can't, you can't afford a misstep. And so I think that really hit home to me halfway up Shasta. I guess I got kind of freaked out by this story about someone like falling down and their clothes burning and melting to their body. I felt like this was the most dangerous and scariest thing I've probably ever done. Um, in spite of not being able to stop crying, I'm like pretty happy that we got past that part and that, you know, we're making good time. Faith, you're doing awesome. We'll, uh, we'll get it done, yeah? Yeah, totally. Keep, keep smiling. Mountain climbing is not something you train for. You need to know what it's like to be in boots for eight to 10 hours, what that pack feels like when it's eating into your shoulders, what the altitude feels like when you get to 12,000 feet, how that headache feels. You know, you're fighting this mental, mental battle the whole entire time. It's just you and nature, and there's really no way out except for your own two feet. Summit's not too far away, another couple of hours, a couple of thousand feet. And then, uh, and then obviously we've got to return safely. When we got up to the top of the west face, I knew that the altitude was hitting me and it was only going to get worse. I'm on the fence about going to the summit, honestly. We did the route. It's two more hours of walking to go to the summit. It's a long way down. So I'm just trying to make that call right now. Faith is pushing through like Faith does. Um, and I have no doubt whatsoever that she will make it to the summit. There's been a number of times during this that she's wanted to quit or I've wanted to quit during the whole program, not necessarily this trip. And um, she hasn't let me so far and uh, I'm pretty sure she's not, gonna, she's not gonna give up on this one either. You know, at that same point, Mark, basically I overheard him saying like, Faith's gonna push through just like she always does. Sometimes it's just really helpful to have someone believe in you. And um, I think that got me to the top one last challenge that lies ahead of us on Mount Shasta. Mark is all smiles the whole entire way. I think he was, he was geared for this. He was ready for this. For Faith, it was a challenge. It was a push for her. And that is what I love about guiding, to see that. And then the elated joy on the summit. Hey, this is it. Go team. So we just made it to the summit of uh, Mount Shasta. It's been a day of revelations uh, and a day of kind of mental toughness, I think. About three hours ago, Faith was on the verge of giving up and um, she decided not to. And yeah, she's sitting right next to me now on the summit, so you can do it. It's just, uh, you gotta keep going. I'm glad I was able to be here with the people I'm here with. Yeah, that's huge. I'm so appreciative of people that are willing to open up their lives and share their passions with you, and I felt really connected when I was up there. On the descent, I'm just looking around, I was just really in awe of the entire experience and in awe of the mountain and in awe of the way that humans interact with nature. Wow. Today we summited Mount Shasta. Kind of a whirlwind, first of all, because I can't believe we went up there. I definitely have a new appreciation for the mountains and feeling really small in these incredible wilderness areas. I've had an incredible time here and I feel really lucky to be able to have this experience. Shasta was one of the toughest testing missions yet. Click here to find out more about the gear we used on the mountain. The Pacific Crest Trail spans 4,265 miles. Click here to learn more about PCT trail maintenance. On our next gear testing mission, we go far east to the Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia. Hit subscribe to come along.